future. Well, Jonathan Sheridan, live from FIG for you now. So, Jonathan, we are going to talk about that in just a moment, but perhaps if we just also pivot into the junk bond space, because mm. from your perspective, cast your eye over this one, what goes on in the U.S.? Are you saying treat that as distinct from what's best practice here? Uh, you know, explain the story if you could. Yes, certainly. Good morning. Uh, as we know, the U.S. high yield market is the biggest in the world. We've only got a, a very nascent high yield market here in Australia with only about 22 issues. Uh, so we always look to the U.S. for guidance in that market. And clearly with the meltdown in commodity markets, in particular in the energy space, uh, what we see is about... 40% of that high yield market in the US, um, particularly in recent issuance, has come out of, of the shale oil industry uh, and they're the, obviously the ones with the higher cost of production and the ones really getting hurt by this low oil price. Now what we're seeing is contagion uh, from those issuers across the high yield space in, in particular um, because there's a lot of mutual funds and index based funds that track the, the entire population and they're trying to sell out of their energy plays which are really getting hammered and therefore it's kind of dragging the rest of the sector down with it. So I think our view is that, you know, in high yield, as, as with any riskier asset, you need to pick your individual investment very carefully and you, you shouldn't really just tar all of high yield with the same brush to say that it's all, you know, re really under pressure and, and terrible investments at this time. Yeah, but I mean, it's tough because you obviously see Third Avenue and that's sort of the case study of the moment, given that it, it sort of begun that liquidation of distressed credit fund assets. But then, you know, you hear other people say, well, there's never just one cockroach during a credit meltdown. And we've already <laughs> seen other funds have have similar issues even as far as London so just talk us through whether you think there could be more of a contagion effect from this and here in Australia even yeah that's right look I think the, the thing the thing that we're really talking about here is liquidity and what, what you find with liquidity is that you know in general it's always there when you don't need it and when you really want to get out of something that's when it disappears because everyone's racing for the exits at the same time so um, that's why I say you need to pick your investments very carefully and you need to understand that what you what you're getting into you know not necessarily everything is always tradable so that's why these funds have locked up their redemptions because it's very easy to provide daily liquidity when things are going well and there's an orderly transition of assets uh, from the funds holdings into cash to pay redemptions but what you see is that if you know for sectors under pressure uh, people are all trying to sell there's often not enough capital around to soak up all those all those offers and and they can't meet their redemptions which is why they've locked up those funds so they can give the cash back to their investors in an orderly manner and not have to institute fire sales. The, uh, the Dallas president of the Fed, Richard Fisher, was actually here, as you'll remember, April of last year. He was at that point saying, look, there are high levels of margin debt, junk bond yields then that were nearing record lows. This is not a new occurrence. This has been sloshing around. There have been people concerned and it's expressing as much before. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. But I think, you know, if you're, if you're buying a highly leveraged shale oil play at 5% at for five or six years, for example, then, you know, that's a very high risk investment that you're taking on with not much margin for error. You know, our, our advice to our clients is always that you should be prepared to hold these things to maturity. And if you're investing in the high yield space, it's going to be a, a rockier ride than if you're investing in investment grade bonds, you know, because they're investment grade for a reason and, and they're high yield for a reason. So you have to be comfortable with the potential of holding that credit through, you know, really bad mark to market valuations against you. But as long as you've got faith in the story, then mm. things should come good in the end. Makes sense. Right, really quickly, we've got RBA minutes out in about five minutes time, less than five minutes. What are you expecting to see? Anything Anything new? Look, I don't think there'll be anything new. We've had uh, Glenn Stevens making a couple of speeches uh, since the rate decision to, to stay on hold, and, and I think that'll be the message that's, that's put forward in these minutes. Mm. Uh, it'll be interesting just to see how they, uh, if or how if and if they discuss the iron ore price reductions. That's that's yeah. the big thing for me. Sure, they can't avoid that. John Sheridan, we will check in with you later. Thank you very much. Thanks.